Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now, there are those people out there who will say that photography is not even a thing until you print it out. And whilst I don't quite sit in that camp, I am very much in favour of printing your work because when you turn it into something tangible, something with genuine value, it's just so satisfying. I genuinely do believe as well that bigger is better. But creating big prints like this can be intimidating. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the whole process from making the image in the field all the way through to uh, exporting the file, sending it off for print, and then mounting it on the wall. And we're also going to look at Topaz Gigapixel, which is an AI software which may render the need for big megapixel cameras pointless. But we'll see. Come with me. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, then make your next move with Squarespace. Right, if you're wondering why I keep wearing this hat indoors as well, it's because barbers have been shut since December and I badly need a haircut. But anyway, we're talking about big prints today. And like I said, it can be intimidating because it can also be expensive. But the good news is, is that you don't necessarily need the most expensive gear. These days, so many cameras are very, very good. So any camera like a Micro Four Thirds to an APS-C to full frame and above will be absolutely fine to make your big prints. The only thing is, is that the bigger the resolution, the more fine detail you will have. Now, people talk about pixel peeping, which is not essentially the best thing to do. However, when you print a picture, I like to be able to get up close to it and see the detail. So if you want that fine detail, the, bit, the bigger the resolution you have will improve things, but it isn't essential. And when we look at Gigapixel AI software that enlarges your images using this AI, we will see whether we can get away with increasing that resolution without actually having the sensor that creates it in the first place. What is important is to have the best possible image you can make. So particularly something with critical focus, really sharp focus, get the focus done as best as you possibly can. ISO as well, if you can keep that as low as you possibly can, because when we in increase these images in size to something like that big, any noise in there will be increased as well. So the lower the ISO, the better. Now, more importantly as well than having a really great camera is having better lenses. So people talk about, it's all about the glass rather than the camera. When that comes to printing big, that's definitely the case because things like chromatic aberration and things like that will be increased in size as well. But I wanted to start this video off showing you how I've made the image that we're gonna be talking about today. We're going back a bit, we're reliving this just for a few minutes, just to show you and tie this whole story together. So let's go out and about, which I've not done for quite a while, and capture the image. Then we'll come back and talk about how we're gonna enlarge it. Hello there, and you join me on a very, very special morning to test out this Fujifilm GFX 100 medium format, 100 megapixel camera. Now, what this camera for me is all about is landscape photography. So that's what I've come out to do this morning in this absolutely beautiful location. And I've been coming here for the last few months fairly regularly. And this morning is just fantastic. I'm gonna to have to take another picture while I'm at it because I've got this beautiful sunrise going on, picking up that beautiful pink color. And I'm just really, really happy with what's happening at the moment. Now I've got this wetland here. I've got the birds singing all around me. I'm quite close to the road, but we'll ignore that. But this is a great camera to have at a time like this. And the title of the video is, what's the point? What's the, do you need 100 megapixels? And in almost every situation, the answer is going to be no. But for landscape photography and for some studio portraiture type photography, sometimes it is quite valuable having those really high megapixel images because you can blow them up uh, very, very big and still maintain the detail. And for landscape photography, that does matter to me now and again. If I want to make a print big, and I, I do feel that bigger is better a lot of the time when it comes to printing, then this camera is gonna be great. Um, so we're gonna just explore around today. 
I've been testing it out for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, just, at, <laughs> I can't get over what I'm looking at here. At this moment in time, this is just a great camera to have. So I think what I'll do is talk you through this scene because it's just so fantastic. I mean, I couldn't have asked for more really. Uh, I'm just going to tighten up my, oh, so nice. The colors. So what I've got, let's have a look. We've got these that sort of cops of trees there which I just think forms a really nice subject. So I've got this sort of pond, and because it's so cold, it's frozen over just nicely. It's not that white, iced type look. It's just frozen solid. What that's doing, because it's really then quite smooth, is just giving me beautiful reflections of that sunrise in that ice. So it's gonna be an image full of color. It's then got these reeds growing out of it to provide some really interesting foreground for the scene. And as I'm looking on this little screen here, it just looks fantastic in the frame. Settings wise, I'm at f16. With a medium format camera like this, f16 is absolutely fine. You're not going to get any diffraction or anything like that. I'm at ISO 100. On the two second timer, I'm just gonna fire it off. Move the camera out of the way. And let's have a little look at that. <laughs> This is why you do landscape photography. You don't need a camera like this, but I'm gonna be, I wanted to capture an image that I was really happy with that I could print really big for this video. And that's, I think I've just captured that image. I was nervous, I'm not gonna lie. So it feels good to get this moment of oh, this cloud, beautiful. I'm just too excited. Let's try again. Two second timer, there we go. I'm happy with that image. <laughs> What a start to this review, what a start to the day. I love it when it begins like this. It doesn't happen all the time, but putting the effort in, make sure that sometimes it does. <laughs> So the image is now captured. I'm using Adobe Lightroom here. You can see the image there. It's edited. I'm not going to go through the post-processing because we're talking about printing. But one thing I would say is that anytime you are printing, you want to add, say, maybe a third of a stop of exposure or brightness to compensate for the backlight. Right, so I'm in the grid, so I'm just going to right click and go edit in and click on Adobe Photoshop. Right, so the image is now loaded into Photoshop and we want to enlarge it because the good print shops like the print space will print your image at the exact dimensions that you send them. So to do that, I'm gonna go into image and just go to image size. I want to set it at centimeters because I want this image to be a meter tall. So 100 centimeters, a meter tall by 125 wide. And then we want to click resample here and we want to go to this and choose which one is best suited. Now, I, I, I always want to preserve the details and I go for preserve details enlargement. The bicubic will give you slightly smoother, but I, because I'm a landscape photographer, I want those details in there. So I'm gonna go preserve details. You can just leave it automatic if you don't wanna have to think about it. I'll then add in a little bit of noise reduction because like I said, as we increase the size of the image, the noise increases too. 10% is probably a bit too much for me, so I'm gonna go down to 5% and then just click OK. You can see how much the image size or the file size is gonna increase. It's gonna double, in this case, to about a gigabyte. So we can zoom in, you can see how big it is. If you press Command-1, uh, that will give you 100%. That's now a very large image, and you can see it's enlarged pretty nicely. I've also been trying out Gigapixel AI, which is an AI software which will increase the size and fill gaps in and get rid of noise and maybe add in detail using AI. This is Gigapixel AI here, if we come across to it, and you can kind of see a before and after preview, and you have to click on update. It then updates, and you can see the difference that this is going to make. You've got the sharpened, noise reduced part on the right and the original enlarged on the left. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because it's quite long winded. If we come back into Photoshop, I'm not usually a big fan of AI software because I don't really like the fact that it's taking away the, or it's adding things that the human either didn't see or didn't think about. All it's doing in this case is just filling in 
a shortcoming of my gear rather than a shortcoming of my skill or technique or artistic vision. And I think that's a subtle difference. So this is the Gigapixel in large file and that is the Photoshop in large file. So I think you can see there if we just keep spinning between them that they look exactly the same. So it hasn't changed my vision or photograph really in any way. But let's just zoom into 100%. So that is the image just done in Photoshop. That's the sort of standard enlargement. And that's with Gigapixel. So it does add a little bit of sharpness, but studying it really close up, it doesn't make all that much difference. And what I've actually found as well is that the Gigapixel one almost adds in like little artifacts which I don't particularly like. It could just be this image. What I did find though, was that when I enlarged uh, an image taken on the Canon 5D Mark IV, which is this one, that's the image. So the, again, they look the same. That is the Photoshop enlarged version. And that's the Gigapixel one. The difference is huge on this one. So that's normal. That's with Gigapixel. The sharpness is much greater. And then with a phone, that's the difference. That's the Photoshop one, that's the Gigapixel. The difference is not massive. It looks maybe a little bit more painterly. That's an iPhone picture blown up to 100, 100 centimeters. So it's still pretty big, but yeah, I'm gonna play around with that a little bit more, but it's definitely worth a look if you want to enlarge your images. But Photoshop is the way I've always done it. It does a great job, so you won't be sorry. The Gigapixel does cost $99, so you're talking small margins, but it may be what you want if you have a slightly smaller sensor, don't know. Right, we're going to talk about paper and printing options in a second, but as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you are a discerning photographer who wants to share their work, there is no better place to do that than on your own website. And for me, the best place for photographers to create their own website is with Squarespace. It's just, more than anything, just so easy to put a really beautiful looking site together. They've got loads of great templates, specifically for photographers. And then once you put all your images and a few of your words on there, it will be completely unique to you. What I love about it is that it just works on every single screen size as well. It changes without you having to do anything. It'll still look beautiful and perfect. You've then got a great place to share your images. And if you wanted to upgrade to start selling prints like we are, creating today. You can upgrade to an online store really, really easily and maybe start making a little bit of money. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you put together and created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Right, so now our file is made. We've uploaded it to whichever printing lab we're going to use. The next thing we need to do is decide what type of paper we are going to use because this has a huge effect on how the final print will, will look. Essentially, you've got glossy, semi-gloss, and then matte papers. And they, all the different papers fall somewhere within those categories. Now, glossy is good for big, saturated, beautiful colored images. It will bring all those colors out. But the slight downside of the really glossy uh, paper is that it's very reflective. So any light that's in your room will just reflect back. Semi-gloss is a nice balance between having all that color dynamics and still having not quite as many reflections. And then you've got matte paper, which is usually like a smooth cotton rag type paper, which doesn't have any reflective surfaces. It still looks great and it feels particularly and looks particularly artistic, but then a lot of people will put images behind a frame so you lose that a bit. Printing big as well, having a matte paper that big, I'm not sure that's the best way to go. If you're not going to cover it, it can become e more easily damaged than some of the glossy papers which have a coating on it usually that protects it a little bit. I think the best thing to do is, with, is to get a paper sample pack and the print space provide that. So you can, they'll send you this for about 10 quid I think it is and you've got all these different papers that you can kind of look through uh, and get a sense of what you really want. See, that's a very glossy one there. You can see the reflections. We also need to think about the printing process. 
So essentially, there are two different types. You have your inkjet printer, what they call Gisli sometimes. That's basically just an inkjet, like I'm printing here in my studio up to A2. Uh, you can blow that up bigger and it will still look great. And the image we're talking about today is actually with a Gisli inkjet process. The one behind me there, which I have made a video about before, is using a C-type printer, more traditional photographic process. That's where the paper itself is photosensitive. So they expose that paper with your photo, then it goes through the chemicals and the final image is produced. Now that's good because the image is not actually sitting on the surface of the paper like with inkjet. It's actually essentially a part of the paper itself. There isn't a matte option with that, but I just love that C-type print because it just feels like the final step of that photographic process. Uh, and it feels, it just feels nice and I really love it. We then need to think about mounting. The image we're talking about today is mounted on a, it's like a really cheap kind of foam board. And then the one behind me is mounted on a slightly more expensive foam type material, but it's more woody. You can get MDF as well, but the price just starts to go up. But I think mounting it onto a board when we're printing this big is pretty much essential because if you've just got a print of that size rolled up, then it's, it's gonna be difficult to do something with that. And if you're gonna get it framed as well, which adds to the cost even more, you're probably gonna want it on a mounted board anyway. It's the mounting itself actually that starts to really bump the price up. With both of these, the mounting cost more than the print itself. But let's talk about getting it up on the wall. Yes, here. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. 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 Look at that. Huge. Here we go, Sparky. Here it is. <laughs> I've been waiting a few days now for this to arrive. I'm very excited. So, knife. Ah, Sparky man, what are you doing? Right, so I've got the print here and the first thing to think about is to actually protect your print because you've spent a lot of money on this and you don't want to get it damaged. So I would recommend some gloves. I've got these nice white ones from my old police uniform. And I also have the prints on this table, which has a cloth on it, just again to protect the print because we're gonna have to put it face down. So let's turn it over now. There are a few ways to do it and it really depends particularly on the weight of your actual artwork. So the most secure way is to attach some sort of metal aluminum frame or something to the actual uh, mounting board, which will then hang to hooks on the wall. If you've got a frame, that's the most, if you're going to frame it, that's the most secure way to do it. But with mounting board, my preferred way to do it is using Velcro. And we, there's different types of Velcro depending on the weight of it. So I have two examples here. I've got this white stuff here, which is this sort of two thin rolls that you can see there. That works for this print because it's quite light. The other one that I've got up there needs this uh, black, heavier, heavier weight stuff. But what I like about Velcro is that it's not going to damage your print because even if you take it off the wall and put it back on the wall and move it, you can just use the same Velcro. So you never need to peel that off. That can just stay there. Velcro will damage a painted wall though, but you can just obviously paint over that again quickly. What I do to mount it is I just put the Velcro in certain spots like I have here, and then the bit that goes on the wall here, I will press that down onto these and then we'll put it onto the wall. So I'm just gonna do that now and then we'll put it onto the wall.
Right, so going on this wall, normally the best practice would be to measure up so you know exactly where you want to put it, use a couple of marks with a pen or a pencil, but I'm just gonna eyeball it and that's particularly easy because I've got this brick. So, well, I say it's easy, let's see. I think I've got it. Now let's just press it down to make sure that we've got a nice connection with the wall. That's where, again, the gloves come in handy. Yeah, I mean, that's looking pretty good. Now, if you've never done this, I can heartily recommend it, although it is not cheap. This one costs about £300. This is on the Canson Burrito Gisley type print paper. That one is the C type, and that is about £400, so it's not cheap. And if you get it framed, it becomes even more expensive. But that said, you're creating something beautiful and something special, and maybe it is expensive, but it's just so satisfying. And you are then left with something with really genuine wow factor that when people walk into the room or you sell something like this to them, it's gonna have a huge impact because it is huge. Yeah, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. I'd love it if you were to hit that like button because that really helps me out. But I'll see you again very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.